Hey, Todd. Hey, Amy, how are you? Good, how are you? I like your little picture when it, when it comes on. Oh, what is it? The coffee mug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the coffee mug say? Hot Mess Express. You don't yeah. remember it's been so long? <laughs> no idea. I've, done, I've like done several Zoom because uh, I like delete it all the time because it's like one of those apps I don't want to use. Right. No, <laughs> and like you run out of space on your phone, you're like, ah, I don't need that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I guess I'll get right to this. I know you have a long day today, so I don't want to take up too much time. Um, so you're fighting Phil again. What was your thought when you uh, got that name and you realized like this is going to be my opponent? Uh, I didn't expect it. Like. I wanted to fight for KSW. It's a great organization. They put on some of the best shows in the world. I didn't expect to go right into fighting for the title. Um, you know, um, I thought good because we had Josh around online a little bit. and He didn't want the fight, which I thought was like, what do you mean you don't want this fight? Like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I wanted him to say he wanted the fight just simply so that they, you know, they would sign me and then I could come fight him maybe later. Right. I didn't expect like immediate title shot. But when you look at the landscape of the sport, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, you know, he's a very tough opponent. Uh, he's as tough as they come. There's a reason, you know, you don't go out and win nine fights in a row at heavyweight, even on the local circuit very easily. You know what I mean? Let alone holding the belt. So I, I have a lot of respect for him in that manner. Um, I'm excited for the fight. I'm excited for the challenge. Why do you think he didn't want the fight or why? I guess why are you surprised that he didn't want the fight? I think he was chasing a money fight with Pujanowski. Um, I, I guess he thought he would get more money from a sponsorship perspective. I don't know. Uh, I just, it was pretty clear he didn't jump all over it when I was giving him the opportunity. I literally was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, this, you know, like, I'm, I'm willing to say I, I would fight you. And you're just like, nah, let me go fight this other guy. Um, I'm sure part of him definitely wants that fight back. So here we are. You know, he signed the fight. It's not like he's not. I'm not saying like, oh, Phil's whatever. Phil's a fighter, you know? So uh, it just wasn't his first choice, which I found very interesting. You mentioned uh, sponsorships there. I'm curious, are you going to have anything painted across you for this fight? Do you know? Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, you know, the landscape of MMA is just much different. Is really about the best way I could say. Like COVID, um, you know, the sport is just, it's not, I don't know. I don't, yeah, not personally as of right now. No, I do not, I do not have, I will not have a, a big emblem across my back or anything like that. Other than some of my trashy tattoos I already have. <laughs> no, I, I understand that. Um, yeah. What would there be like a sponsorship that you would be like, no way I will never put that on my back. Like a product that you're, you're just, I mean, obviously maybe something embarrassing. Uh, I'm pretty, yeah. Like, I don't know. I've, I've gotten a little more mature about that kind of stuff. So I don't know, like money, money kind of trumps everything in this world, sadly. So I don't know if I really care. Uh, when I was younger, I definitely was like more to like, I would have stuck more to like my values or whatever it might be. Um, but I'm very honest, like money these days is kind of a priority over anything else, as you can see with every little detail in our society. <laughs> so you would so, take an adult diaper sponsorship? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I mean, I'm already out there fighting like in real, like I don't, it's, I don't think you can care about how people feel about you as a professional fighter. Like those fans are so ruthless and naive. Like they're kind of clueless. I hate to say it. Like they have no concept of like what it takes to fight, what it takes to get in there, what it takes to even get the opportunity to fight. Like I have fans that are mad at me and saying I, like all kinds of wild stuff online on a regular basis, simply based off their perception of like, Oh, why don't you fight anymore? It's like, help me find a fight, bro. <laughs> like, it's not that easy like <laughs> go find one on the street but to go you know it's it's just uh like i said the landscape of mma is not um it's not what it was especially pre-covid um right. so uh it definitely changed like <clears throat> do i regret asking out of my ufc contract yeah probably to some degree i'm not here to pretend like i don't like it's they run things smoothly and that would have been a guaranteed fight um but I was chasing money at the time, you know? So what are you going to do? Um, I think it's worked out better because I actually, the other organization that I was with, I think this is a better, more well-ran organization. So I'm very excited for that opportunity. So 
can you talk to me a little bit about what you've been up to since your last fight? Because it's been a bit, you know, a bit there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of us COVID some, it's so I, uh, let's go back to like 2018. I, I was at the tough gym, helping Blagway get ready for his fight with junior Dos Santos. We were in the old tough gym. The one that's closed down now. Uh, they actually closed it down the following week. So we were sparring. Uh, I fell through the cage and blew out my knee. Um, from there I went and had surgery about a month later. Uh, the surgery did not go well. Um, I really can't comment. There was a lawsuit, but I ended up dropping the lawsuit because it's too much of a hassle. And like, <clears throat> needless to say, there was, there was some complications with the surgery at month 10, the UFC was frustrated because I had sat out for two years. I sat out for two years after Frank trying to negotiate for a better contract. I was making $10,000. Like I fought a main event for you guys. You guys took away our sponsorships. Like, you know, like, I remember I was talking to Joe. So I was like, Joe, I'm going to go, I'm going to train full time. I want you to know this Joe, but I'm going to go try to work a job because I have to support myself and I can't do both. Um, I want to be a professional fighter, you know, like, can we work something out? And Joe was very staunch on like, no, this is your contract. This is as good as it gets, bro. Um, so I sat out and I, I kind of established my life in California. Um, and then, you know, Joe, I guess, sold, you know, he, he got out of the business, let's say. He got his percentage and sold um, his rights and made all that money and and stopped being a matchmaker. And then they hired Mick Maynard. Uh, got with Mick Maynard. Mick Maynard gave me a pretty good contract. Um, so... I signed a fight and literally in that camp, my shoulder kept dislocating during practice. So I had to pull out. So then that puts me at a three year mark after, and then I blew out my knee in the tough gym. So they're frustrated that I'd sat out for a long time. It's like, well, I only sat out for two years. The other two years I was dealing with like shoulder surgery, knee surgery. Um, and you know, they were just like, Hey, if you want to keep your contract, you got to fight right now. So I, you know, I didn't have a choice. So I, now I'm fighting 10 months after uh, a reconstruction, <laughs> which you don't do, yeah. let alone a reconstruction that didn't work. Um, you know, thank God I had the USCPI center kind of help me get ready for that fight. And I was able to kind of get through it. Uh, but then right after the fight, um, you know, they were very frustrated, even though the, the doctor, like you can see my eye was messed up. There's all those records. They were like, it didn't look good. Um, so they were very frustrated and tried to have me fight like later, which physically I couldn't have been able to do anyway. Um, there was just a lot of frustration there um, and how they handled me. My manager told me several times, I had three different managers with the UFC and three different times they told me they don't like you. You need to go somewhere else. Um, so eventually, like after a while, like the psychology, that's not healthy. Yeah. Um, I like the UFC. I think it's one of the best organizations in the world, but like that psychology is not a good place to have that. Like your employer doesn't like you. Like, I don't know, <laughs> like the sport's hard enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, uh, you know, I, I had, so I went and did the surgery. It took a year to recover. And then I sat around for like a year trying to figure out what I wanted to do, to be honest. Like I was training full time, but um, <clears throat> I was kind of frustrated. Like I really was like, um, and COVID was going on. So there was a lot of like all these variables. Um Decided I wanted to fight, uh, kind of got ready. Then there was like some opportunity outside the UFC um, with another organization, but then the fighter didn't want to take the fight. Uh, it was a big opportunity, uh, which kind of led me to then. I don't know. I, I got lost in like, what have I been doing? Sorry. No, that's uh, okay. <laughs> I'm enjoying the story. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say the first two years I was dealing with like re recovering from a knee surgery uh and kind of dealing with the fallout of like what i wanted to do did i want to stay in the ufc when i've had my third manager in a row tell me hey i wouldn't do this i wouldn't stay here i would go to this organization or this organization or you know so there was like a year of that then once i finally made a choice um i got strung along by another organization um it's really the best way i can put it and uh you know that cost me about another year um i've been training full-time healthy for the last what two and a half to three years um, so it's, it's tough. Like guys at the gym are just like, holy shit. Like, we're so happy you're finally fighting. Like my friends are just like, damn dude, this is, they can't believe I've been in the gym the way I have. Um, they're like, dude, that's crazy. Like that's impressive. Cause it's difficult when you don't have a target, 
you know um but i love this sport and uh i you know like it's just it's i enjoy training just the same so it's like that forever path of improving is i, I love it you know was so there ever I, oh sorry go ahead no no go ahead i'm kind of rambling at you sorry that's okay i was just wondering if there was ever a thought or a fear that it might not happen it seems like everything was piling up after or thing after thing after yeah thing. yeah no of course it definitely yeah that, i mean that, that happens all the time it's like especially when you talk about money like i've spent more money on the sport than i've made you know this is like this is like a motocross type of sport like you're, you know so it's like uh you know uh eventually i i, I got a full-time job uh went away from personal training because with personal training you can kind of control your life a little bit then i went into like a corporate gig basically um and i was very scared i was very scared that it you know I'd let, let my opportunity slip. I'd let my time pass by. I'd let injuries get in the way or politics. Um, I was petrified. Um, but I still feel like I have a good five years left in my career, like solid, healthy five years. So I'm excited to just take advantage of that now. Are you worried at all about ring rust or do you feel like that doesn't exist? I don't know. Or people talk about it, but I've never... Hair. Yeah, I think that's something that's like... I, I Again, I don't no i've done this before you know um no i think that's something that like people make up like that's the thing that literally like reporters and like these camps are so long like mma you're not getting to fight regularly anyway like it definitely helps to fight and then fight again a month later the times in my career i've got to do that were some of the most fun i've had because it definitely takes away some of the nerves and some of like the processes it's more familiar um but I believe I'm mature enough to kind of push through that and not let that be a factor, to be honest. I don't really see it could be. Um, I'm not going to pretend like, uh, you know, if people talk about it enough, there must be some truth to it. But I just don't. I, I think that's something you can control. Right. Um, the first time that you fought, Phil, was sort of like a turning point of your career. And it seems like you're going to be fighting him again at a turning point in your career. Is that seem, I mean, have you thought about that or am I the first one? No, it's definitely crossed my mind. I, yeah, I find it very, uh, it's intriguing, right? It's like, oh, wow. Like the last time I was at this, this uh, junction, it was this guy. And now I'm here again at another junction. Um, yeah, I, I find that interesting. I, you know, I don't know what to, I've definitely thought about it. I'm like, oh, wow. That's, I've coincided the two together for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I think every fight, like, you know, media needs to make a story. Uh, people need to follow a story for their own mental, like, capacity. Uh, so people are constantly creating some sort of narrative around. Every fight's a junction. Every fight's a um, a pivotal point. Um, so I, I just, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, I feel like a lot of that's all manufactured. It's a fight. If you could choose the story that, that we tell then about this fight, what would you say? Or do you think we just need to just look at the fight and just not try to find meaning? Uh, if I had established meaning, it's, it, you know, I'm a guy that has been at the highest level of the sport in the gym and on a competitive level for 17 years. Uh, I'm a guy that has not came out and shown his full potential. There's, that's not a secret. Um I'm a guy that has been touted to do great things and either whether it's politics, injuries or whatever has gotten in the way. And then there's sometimes I haven't performed at my level. That's, that's the sport. That's sports in general. Um, you know, what I, what I would look at this is, is an opportunity to kind of culminate and improve what level I am and come back and crack the top 25, which is where I belong um, in the sport. Uh, I go out and I beat Phil and I'm back in the top 25 and then I can kind of start to reestablish my career and actually have a career. Like, again, like this is a, <laughs> I don't think people like they have this idea that like, I'm not getting paid weekly. I'm not getting paid monthly. I'm paying to do this sport. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it, I wouldn't call it, um, I don't know how to, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it'll give me a chance to have a career and it'll give me a chance to kind of prove the level that I've always been at. You know, I've been training with some of the best guys in the world at that level uh, for 17 years. And it's not ever been a secret that I'm at that level. And it's just a chance to finally prove that. You know, we keep calling this a rematch, but it's been so many years since you fought. I mean, I, I can imagine you're a different fighter. He's a different fighter. Does it kind of feel like a brand new, fresh fight? Or do you, do you feel like you kind of know what you need to know about him? 
Uh, I mean, he's a different fighter. He's on anti-anxiety medication. He talks about it repetitively in every interview. It's the turning point of his career. Um, I find it very intriguing that a former drug counselor <laughs> is using, you know, whatever he might be to to compete. Uh, I feel like we get paid to have anxiety. Like the fight is, if you're not anxious about a fight, there's something there's something not playing right. I've had one fight where I was like a little too feeling good <laughs> and I didn't perform well. Frank came out and stomped me. You know, I trained with Frank many times and I felt very overconfident when I fought Frank uh, simply because I thought I was way better than him. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, it was a fight. And uh, so I, I don't know. I think he is a different fighter. Um, his heart rate seems a little slower. Uh, he seems a little calmer. Um, he seems a little more confident. Um, you know, he's built, uh, you know, he's, he's still much the same, but he could come out and do a number of different things. So I don't know. Like, it is a new fight. Every fight's new to me. I don't feel like, especially in this sport, as it's ever evolving, I really don't feel like every, even if you rematch a guy three or four times, it's still a new fight. It's still a new fight. Like, guys are evolving. Guys are making new decisions. And, and a fight is so complex and there's so much involved that every fight's new. You know, like, I've sparred. 30 plus rounds with Cain Velasquez or whoever these people are. And every round is a different round. You know, every, every it's like, yes, they're the same guy, but there's evolution occurring constantly. Um, I think that's one of my favorite things about the sport, to be honest. And I've got a couple of questions just about sort of MMA topics, if you're willing to discuss. Right, um, right. Just today we had the news that um, Alexander Volkanovsky is holding his pound for pound number one title after losing to islam makachev curious what your thoughts are about the number two pound for pound being underneath no you know what i'm trying to say here <laughs> yeah uh i think pound for pound's a fucking hilarious like it's stupid like is Al is alexander volkanovsky one of the best fighters to ever grace this sport for sure um is the pound for pound list make any logical sense to me no um weight classes barely make sense to me when guys want to talk about they're the best fighter in the world it's like why are you gonna weight class them like what are you talking about like go fight these guys that are 100 pounds bigger than you know, come talk to me um i i just think that's like a fan thing is like who's the greatest of all time all that stuff seems so stupid to me i hate to say because there's no logic behind it it's like this game people are playing um it's like keeping up with the joneses almost like it's something humans need to like latch on to the i don't know i can't understand i've never understood it to be honest like who's the greatest like there is no that doesn't exist and I, that never will exist in the millions of years of, of this world <laughs> it's like i don't know you know people human nature is funny to me is all i guess i can really say i don't i don't have an opinion on it um does it make sense logically no um but again what is a pound for pound like what does that even mean that Per pound of muscle, he's the best fighter compared to all the other pounds of muscles of other fighters. You know, like, I don't know. It's silly to me. I, I can't, I can't, I've never grasped it. I'm glad you said that because that's pretty much the answer I always give because I'm like, there's no way to know. You can't know that. There's yeah. no way to know. Um, so I think it's an opinion thing. Like, people want yeah. to believe that their opinions, and it validates people's opinion, right? Which validates their ego, which makes it, you know, whatever it is. Like, again, I'm, I don't get it. Never happened. I'm sure people are upset to hear that, but it's like, prove it. Truth, right? Yeah, you can't, you can't prove it. Um, John Jones is returning after a long layoff to fight at heavyweight. I'm just curious how you think he'll do at heavyweight. I think he'll do great. I don't think it's gonna be like he spent a lot of time getting there. Um, I think he's still John Jones. I think he's still very incredibly athletic. I think he's just gonna be bigger, hit a little harder. Um. And he may have a little few different tactics because his body may be larger and he may not move the same. I don't know. Um, I think 205 and heavyweight, there's not a massive difference. Um, a lot of these 205ers, I see them. Like, I've trained with them over the years. They're 245, 250, walk around in the gym. Their frames are a little bit different usually. Like, they're not carrying the same kind of bone structure that I am, but they're still 245 pounds, the same as me or, you know, the next heavyweight that I'm fighting. Um so I don't, I don't think there's a lot there. Um, I don't think there's much to make of it, especially the time that he's taken. I just think that Jones is, you know, like the difference, the biggest difference between the heavyweight and the 205 is guys just hit a little harder. There's a little more KO artist in the, in the heavyweight division, probably most based off bone structure and bone density. Um, 
I don't even know if it's weight, you know, because a lot of those guys, again, they walk. Jones has been trained with heavyweights his entire career. I don't, I don't think this is going to be anything new to him. Um, I knew Jones was trained with heavyweights back like 10, 15 years ago. So I, I just, it's a silly thing to me. Like, oh, no, it's different because he's, no, it's not. It's not any different. <laughs> he's still it's John all that storylines we're trying to make. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hate, I'm not like hating on you guys. It's just like, I don't, I can't, like, is it fat? Is it fun to see him step up and fight a bigger opponent that's like highly skilled? Yes. Do I think this is the fight that's going to show that he's like in the heavyweight division? No, because the guy he's fighting is the closest to a 205 or of all the heavyweights there are. The way he moves, the way he fights, the style, the, um, the athletic ability. The big difference between heavyweights and light heavyweights is speed, typically. Gagne has both. Um, so I don't think, you know, I'm more interested in seeing the fight. That's what I'm very interested in. That's a very good fight. It's a very incredible matchup. So it's an exciting fight in that sense. And it's exciting that uh, arguably the greatest of all time, one of the best fighters ever to grace this sport is fighting again. That's, I think, the exciting storyline for me. And I guess my last question, um, Bellator just had uh, Ryan Bader versus Fedor Emelianenko for the Fedor's retirement fight. There were Fans were kind of up in arms like, hey, you fed um, Fedor to, to Ryan Bader. There was no chance he was going to win. Look what happened. How disrespectful. Then on the other half, you have people saying, but that's what the fight he wanted. You got to give the legend what he wants. How do you feel about that sort of a matchup when you're on your way out? Do you feel like you should take the easy one to get the win or take what you want? I don't know what easy one he would have had. I think they'd already kind of like tried to mill through and get him the, it looked like they'd already done that. Um, Bader from a stylistic standpoint is probably somebody that they thought he could knock out. Um, you know, that's business. That's all business stuff. That's all again, like prefabricated story plots. Like, Oh, he's the Fedor is one of the best fighters ever. He's really fun to watch. Um, do I think he was as good as Cain Velasquez at the time that they, no, no, I don't think he could have touched Cain. Do I think that he was even like, he was the greatest of the era before, but we, that, that they didn't even give him the moniker then when he was in pride. Um, you know, I love Fedor. I know people are like these diehard fans and have this like attachment to this human. Um, no, I think that was like one of the best fights they could have gave him. And it also gave him an opportunity to get a belt and retire with a belt. That's what he wanted. Uh, they didn't feed him to Bader. Bader.